Hello, my name is Bruce of Elam.org and Risk Management Framework. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about roles and responsibilities of an IT security person. So there's many different roles and responsibilities. A lot of times we generally think that uh, it's just a firewall guy or something, but there's so many different aspects. And I want to focus on um, a few. One, the technical. Um, and then another one will be like um, architects. I want to talk to you about engineers. And I want to talk to you about assessors. And I want to talk to you about managers. Let's start with the managers. So the managers are sometimes known as information system security managers, ISSM. They're a critical role because they have to talk directly to the system owner. So if you're in a Department of Defense environment, they're going to be the guys that talk directly to the general or to the colonel who owns the whole system directly. They're going in their office and talk to them and saying, sir, here's why we can, we have to do this. We have to implement this security. Here's why we can't implement this. Here's your level of risk. They're in there um, talking directly to the people who manage the whole, the whole thing. But then they have to turn around and talk to the technical guys. And so they have to be very versatile. A lot of times it's a stressful job because they're hated on both ends. They, they always have bad news for the managers and they always have bad news for the system engineers, the system security technical people. So it's a very hard uh, role to play but it's very critical. Uh, next is the auditors. Now, the only people who are more hated than the managers is probably the auditors because they come in into a field and they're kind of like uh, IRS because they come in and they have to analyze what's going on with your system. You spent months on creating this system and then some auditor comes in and tells you why your system sucks, why your system, ha where your system has holes in it and then they go even further where they document all those problems and then they send them up to your, not even to your manager, straight to the boss, the guy who owns everything. and. So they're the most feared and hated people probably in, in the entire um, information security field. Um, definitely feared if not hated. So another group is policy writers. Um, a lot of times they're called information system security engineers or information system security officers. They kind of have a synonymous job. They do a lot of the same things. But it's a lot of documentation. It's a lot of politics and policy is what they do. Certification and accreditation is what they used to call it. Now they call it risk management framework. But they do a lot of documentation. They do a lot of coordination with the system engineers to get that information of how the system needs to be secured or is secured. And then they send that to their, their boss, which is the, usually the information system security manager. So a lot of times they're sitting in the same room as the information system security manager as they're talking to the upper level manage, management. And so these guys they have a pretty rough job. This is what I've been doing for a very long time. I know a lot about this particular um, role, but uh, it's not that hard once you once everything is greased and good to go, and you have good relationships with the information, with the actual administrators, and a good relationship with the upper level management. It's actually pretty smooth. The problems happen when there's a contention between upper level management and the system administrators. When that happens, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. But nine times out of ten, you know, the job's actually been pretty, pretty good. Next is the technical guys. You've got network technical guys. You've got a network that are specializing in networking, Cisco, Juniper devices, and they have to know routing protocols. They have to know how to do switching. They have to know how, why a, a network is slow, how to get it faster, how to add more stuff onto the network, how to expand it without make, bogging it down, how to do wireless. Those are your networking gurus. And then you have your firewall guys. Your firewall guys, um, of course, they do firewalls. And normally, I notice that they're specialized in one particular product. Like right now, what's hot is the Palo Alto firewall. So they'll be really good at the Palo Alto firewall. But typically, once they know how to do the, I notice the real good guys, once they know 
how to do the firewall rules or VPN rules or all that kind of stuff, and they know how to do it really well on one product, they usually can translate all of that onto another product, such as the Cisco firewall, or they can do it on the Sidewinder firewall, which is now called McAfee firewall, I believe, or any kind of firewall. They can usually just go back and forth because they already understand how a firewall is supposed to work, so it just comes to them like that. So other technical people would be like server, your, your server gurus, your server technical experts, and they typically, the security portion of it, and normally I notice server guys aren't like just security, security is like a side thing for them, um, but they know how to set up the server, they know how to do Active Directory for example, or other products, but then the, the security comes later, but the real good guys know security very well. So those are your technical guys and there's I'm sure I'm missing lots of other different aspects of the technical side because it's just so broad and normally they know one product but once they're really good at that one product they know how to do all these other products architects so architects are normally senior level security senior level uh, very technical guys and uh, they've been doing it for a very long time or if they're younger guys they just are so good at technology. I mean, they're like the LeBron James of technology, and they just know it. Coming out of when they were born, they knew how to do it, you know. <laughs> and I know a few guys like this. But these guys have to know how to talk to the managers, right? So they have to have the maturity level to go and talk to, go in the belly of the beast and talk to the upper level managers and explain to them in their own words how to do all this extremely technical stuff. They have to be able to translate what is this huge infrastructure, which they have to understand, by the way, they have to understand the, the networking piece, the, the, the security firewall piece, uh, the, the, uh, the auditing piece, and all the stuff that goes on with the information system security officers, all the policies. They have to understand a little bit of all of that and then wrap that up in a bow and then explain that to the upper level management in a technical way that's not going to confuse them. It's a very hard job. It's very political and it's very technical. It's probably the hardest job of all is the architect job because um, you, you have to be very well rounded. Analysts. So analysts is something I'm recently familiar with. These are guys who watch the logs on a network. They watch all the logs on the network. And it reminds me of like Neo in the Matrix where he's watching all that code go on the, on the screen. And then they can say, oh, blonde, brunette, redhead. You know, they, they're that good where they're looking at the logs and then they can correlate and say, okay, I know based on these logs because um, this log triggered here. Um, I can see that they came on this IP through the firewall that wasn't uh, didn't have a firewall rule and then they went to this domain controller and then they went to this system and now this system is trying to beacon out to some system that's on our blacklist. They have to make all of those connections and a lot of times they don't even have the visual tools to do it. you know. Um, but they use things like ArcSight, Splunk, and sometimes they just use straight raw logs um, to just determine what is going on on the network. These are the guys you call when you think you've been hacked. You're in your organization and you think you've been hacked and you have to call somebody. The number is normally going to go to these guys. I mean, they're like a detective. They have to take all of these different pieces, put them together and say, okay, this is what happened. A lot of times they're experts in forensics and it's a kind of a glorified position because you see it on CSI or you see it on movies and stuff and then they have to know some of the hacking piece like how to how to how to pen test a system they have to know uh, all that kind of stuff that's pretty much it I mean those are the ones that I'm familiar with there's lots of other aspects there's physical security there's uh, crypto security which we didn't talk about there's CompuSec there's MSEC there's uh, electronics there's so many different aspects of just security so I just want to cover like the main roles that you see in an organization and how they relate to one another. So that's it.